Hello, welcome to RIT Sports Zone. I'm John DeTulio. And I'm Emily Clark. With just 10 games remaining in the regular season, the RIT men's hockey team has plenty of work to do if they hope to secure a first round bye in next month's Atlantic Hockey Association playoffs. The Tigers hosting Holy Cross in a pivotal weekend series at the Ritter in the second tied at two. Shane Stockton scores unassisted to give the Crusaders a 3-2 lead heading to the third, but the Tigers would answer on the power play. Senior Mike Kolovecchia scores his team leading 11th goal of the season to tie the game at three. We go to overtime and in the extra session. RIT with a golden opportunity. Josh Mitchell goes for the wraparound, but the puck is knocked away. RIT and Holy Cross would skate to a three all tie. Game two of the weekend series, pick it up in the first, Tigers on the power play, Greg Noy scores to put the Tigers up 2-1. It stayed that way until the third when Adam Schmidt got the equalizer with the power play goal. One of two goals on the night for Schmidt. Then with 4.41 left in regulation, Mike Barrett scores to put the Crusaders up for good. They added an empty netter and Holy Cross went on to beat the Tigers 4-2. RIT is now winless in its last four games. Well, when the hockey season began, there was no question who would be in between the pipes. But when Jordan Ruby and the Tigers managed to win just once in their first 10 games, head coach Wayne Wilson decided to make a change. And as, as Melissa Bromley reports, it was a dream come true for one freshman goaltender who grew up watching Tiger hockey. Mike Rotolo grew up watching RIT hockey at the Ritter Arena, hoping one day he'd be a Tiger. Now, initially you weren't committed to RIT. Can you explain what happened? Yeah, I committed to St. Lawrence. Um, it was my first year of juniors around Christmas time. They offered me, and uh, you know, I'd been talking to RIT as well, but uh, the timing was a little different. I think RIT wanted me sooner. St. Lawrence wanted me a little bit later, and I wanted to stay in the USHL another year. So. Uh, talked to my family and I decided to choose St. Lawrence and uh, that was the plan originally and then uh, they had a coaching change and you know we kind of got off on the wrong foot and you know we butted heads a little bit but uh, you know he's a good guy they have a good team over there but I knew it wasn't the right fit and I always wanted to be a Tiger anyways. Don Logan, he's allowed to rap or anything he wants to do. What was it about RIT that brought you here? Number one it's my hometown uh, you know a lot of kids say like I got to get out of this town I want to get out of here to play college I don't believe in that uh, you know, when you got something as good as you have it here, Division One hockey in your hometown, how could you turn it down? And when Wills gave me the offer, I think it took me about five minutes to uh, say yes. Rotolo spent the first 10 games of the season watching junior Jordan Ruby play before he finally got the nod. And there you see the talk of the town. Mike Rotolo certainly giving this Tiger team a spark. Yeah, I remember it. Uh, woke up that morning and uh, coach texted me and said, you'll be in the pipes tonight. And, uh, Right from there, it was pure excitement. I, uh, my dad was at work that Saturday morning. I texted him to tell him and spread the word to about 30 relatives, and they all showed up that night. And it wasn't one of my best games, but we got the win, and that was what was most important. I was excited about that. Ironically, Rotolo's first collegiate win came against the school he had originally committed to. Were you impressed with Mike when he got that first start back in November? Uh, yes, I was. Uh, St. Lawrence, a very good team, uh, had beaten us the night before. Uh, it was non-conference, so we felt that you know we could put them in, and uh, there wasn't anything going to happen standings-wise. But still, have a good test and get a good read on where he was uh, in the process. And uh, he came in and had a good game. Uh, the game, uh, he probably would have liked to have made a couple saves at the end of that game because it got a little interesting. But he played very well in that game. A quick two-on-one going the opposite way. Quick shot. Rotolo makes the save. For every game, I get nervous. You know. It was maybe a little more because it's in my hometown and it's my first college start. But, uh, you know, I, I don't believe when people say they're not nervous for our games. You always have either good nerves or bad nerves. But, uh, you know, it was exciting nerves that night. And when they called my name for the starting lineups, it was a pretty cool experience. I thought his demeanor uh, prior to the game uh, gave us confidence, uh, very talkative, uh, a lot of fight in him, very competitive but very vocal. You don't always get that in a goaltender. And uh, uh, we just thought we'd just change maybe the tempo. And we didn't realize how much we had changed it with Mike just because of his personality, I think, uh, helped uh, him and our team at that particular time. Quick shot with Polo giving up a rebound, but he'll pounce with on Polo it. and the Tigers went unbeaten in his first five games. But a slow start to the new year cost the freshman his starting spot for now. It's tough not being in that, you know, obviously everybody wants to play, but uh, 
Jordan Ruby's a great guy and a great goalie. Uh, good mentor to learn from, and you know, uh, we battle hard in practice, and he's playing well right now, so you know, I just gotta keep working hard and just wait for my next chance, and if I get it, you know, you just gotta grab it and go with it. I think that's what we're gonna try and do right now, is if uh, Jordan's on a roll, he's gonna go, and then if, if, if he has a, a tough time or whatever, we can always put Mike in. I think then he can run with it for a while, and that's just uh, how we're gonna approach the, the, the finish line here as we go along. There's not a lot of games left, but you, you don't wanna, uh, have both guys uh, having difficulty uh, getting their confidence by playing just one game a week. Knowing that RIT wasn't your first choice, are you happy with your decision and are you happy with the support that you've gotten from the community? I wouldn't say it was my first choice. Uh, growing up I always told my dad I wanted to be a Tiger and you know when it comes to that point and you know you're choosing between colleges it's really tough and my heart was always with RIT but you know the offer from St. Lawrence was you know it was really intriguing and I like the old coaching staff but my heart was always with RIT, and I'm pretty excited that I ended up getting the opportunity to be here. And there you see Mike Rotolo all fired up. Standing tall, Mike Rotolo. Welcome back to Sports Zone. In a few short weeks, RIT Hockey will say goodbye to Ritter Arena. In January, as a part of the season's farewell to the historic venue, RIT honored those who contributed to the school's storied hockey history. Sports Zone's Melissa Bromley was there. As RIT took on Niagara in the last season here at Ritter Arena, RIT honored past players, coaches, and champions as a tribute to the success of the cherished arena. What's it like being back at RIT after all these years? It's great seeing some old friends and socializing with some old friends that I hadn't seen for a while, but I'm just really amazed the facilities that since I left here in 1983, what the great job they've done in the rink and the dress room facilities. It's great. It's like it's like we never left each other. I mean, uh, you know, I haven't seen some of these guys for years, and now to come back and be a part of this event, it just just brings back a lot of great memories. Um, it really means a lot to think about your four memory or your four years and memories here at the Ritter Arena is amazing. But then when you think about um, the '83 team, the '85 team, and all the memories, all the all the years at the Ritter, it it really means a lot. And you won two national championships here. Can you talk a bit about that and what that was like for you as a player? It's probably the most exciting time of my life, to be honest with you. I mean, I coach back home in Philadelphia right now. I coach a high school hockey team. And I bring up the memories, the traditions that we had here up in college, and I share them with our team. And it's just a part of our, our experience that we share with them that uh, will be everlasting going forward. What was it like seeing the 83 and 85 players? Well, you know, that was a special time in, in my life and a special time in the, in the life of our hockey programs, our first national championship. No one ever thought we were going to win. I never, no one ever thought we were going to be in a national championship, let alone win it. And people weren't even talking about us. Uh, they, what they did say was a pretty good academic institution. We don't know about your hockey program. Well, that night, the next night, we, we beat Lowell. Lowell had lost a game in, home game in 35 games and the next night beat Bemidji for the national championship but we just went wild. It was just the most amazing thing. I remember coming into campus and Bobby Charles says, Coach, what happens if nobody's there to greet us? And we pulled into the corner and there must have been 10,000 people there to wait for us. So we'd come off the bus, they're cheering, they're lifting me, we go into the gymnasium, we had pep rally. I mean, it, it was just so exciting and these, our kids deserved it. They, it was, you really can't put it into, into uh, words. It was just, it's a great time, and every time we, we think about it, we just have so much fun reminiscing about it. What's one of your fondest memories of Ritter Arena? Probably the corner crew and the band. Probably uh, the way that, you know, it would get us that second advantage, if you will, uh, in tight games. You know, it was just part of an atmosphere you can't get anywhere else. Oh, it was unbelievable. There was nothing better, you know, as a college student and, and coming to the Frank Ritter and putting your jersey on and, and going out. You know, 30 years ago was the infancy of the corner crew, crew and such. And to see what it's, it's grown into today is, is phenomenal. I'm certainly, uh, you know, proud to wear the RIT sweater. Next time you'll be back at RIT, it won't be at the Ritter, it'll be at the Policini Center. What does that say for the growth of this program? Oh, it's, it's a huge step for them. Um, you know, it, it should just take them to another level in regards to recruiting and such. So, And it's good for our league. It's good for Atlantic hockey to, 
you know, to, to expand our buildings and, and, uh, and make it a better student athlete experience for our league. So um, it's going to be sad leaving here for the last time, but I'm, I can't wait to be in the new building next year. Well, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I'm really going to miss this place. It was really special, obviously, for playing here. But, you know, I'm really excited about the new venue across the street. And it's going to bring back a lot of memories, but it's also going to bring in and attract a lot of new people. New people to RIT, new people to Rochester hockey, and new people to, to great sport of hockey. I think it'll be awesome. It'll be great for recruiting to have um, the new facilities. It's great to have the dress rooms, but having the new rink I think is awesome. Are you going to be sad to see Ritter go? I'm going to be very sad. I'm going to be here for that last regular season game. Really a special part of my lifetime for me and my family. The RIT women will play their final game at Ritter Arena on February 21st against Syracuse. The men will close out their 46th and final season at Ritter on March 1st against Kamisha. Both teams then will move into the new 4,200-seat Policini Center next fall. The RIT women's hockey team isn't eligible to compete in the NCAA tournament until next season, but the Tigers are in the hunt for a conference championship. RIT hosting Lindenwood at Ritter Arena. First period action, just 17 seconds into the game, and Marissa Majeri lights the lamp to give the Tigers a 1-0 lead. Period winding down, Tigers on the power play. Courtney Kunachika scores as the Tigers shut out Lindenwood 2-0. Well, you may have noticed that the Tigers weren't wearing their traditional home jerseys against Lindenwood. We sent sports own Taylor Beatty to Ritter Arena to solve the puzzle. Since 2010, the RIT women's hockey team has raised over $74,000 for Rochester area charities. This year, the Lady Tigers will team with Autism Up in their annual Skate for a Cure event. How did you first become involved with the Autism Up Foundation? Well, when my son was diagnosed, he was, he was only two years old at the time, and I was looking for some support here locally, and I just stumbled upon this organization at the time was called Upstate New York Families for Effective Autism Treatment, which is a mouthful. The acronym was UNIFEET, and um, it started out with getting involved with them, volunteering. I've always loved to volunteer even when I was a collegiate, so it was something that I wanted to do, giving back, but also looking for support and making friendships of other families who were going through what I was going through. How did this organization get involved with the RIT women's hockey team? RIT's always been a great friend to us. Um, one of our board members, Mark Higgins, has a close friend that works for um, RIT Sports and came to us and said that this was something that they were considering doing for us, that they do every year, the Skate for the Cure, and that they were considering having Autism Up be their charity of choice this year. You like watching hockey? She's taking skating lessons in March. It was something that we talked about right from the get-go hey, if you want fans in the stands and you're going to get out there and get in the community and, you know, support them and they'll support you. And it's, and it's gone both ways. And I couldn't be more ecstatic that we have a school that lets us do these types of games and, and funds this type of stuff for us to give our girls an opportunity um, to, you know, wear those special shirts and just uh, these will be the memories that they, they remember, um, not the wins and losses. That they'll remember wearing that type of shirt uh, for this type of cause. What does this event mean to your organization as a whole? Well, like I said, RIT's always been a great friend to Autism Up, and you know, having the women's hockey team support us and our organization just by you know, the jerseys and supporting our members and RIT having us here on campus today, coming and enjoying the game and RIT making accommodations for us because coming to a typical hockey game for our members is somewhat difficult. It's awesome. I was a college graduate from here two times over and to be able to come full circle and be back on campus again and uh, have RIT give back to the community. It's wonderful the way that the hockey team selected a charity to support so they wanted to give back to the autism community and they selected Autism Up and it's, it's just simply wonderful for all the families. Did being part of the Autism Up event add anything to the game? Definitely. Being part of the Autism Up added a huge part of the game. Um, you know, we knew that we had people in the stands that were here for a reason and here to support us, so we didn't want to disappoint them. Um, I think to have them in the back of their mind, um, we've all been dealt this good card, you know, of being athletic and having all these, like, 
support systems around us that, you know, we want to be able to support them too. And, you know, I think that every little thing that we can help, like, it just makes their life a little bit better, and that's what's important. Last spring, the RIT men's lacrosse team reached the Division III National Championship for the first time in program history. But after coming up just short in the title game, the Tigers return in this season, ready to prove they're still championship caliber. So let's talk about last season first. You make it to the national championship, unfortunately fall short. What was that disappointment like? It was nice to see uh, a group kind of come together and gel, um, you know, really finish in some tough, tough games. Um, you know, it's, it's too bad in the, in the final game we couldn't get it done, but, um, you know, we put a lot of time and effort in uh, throughout the season. Um, I think most importantly, the guys finally got a taste of the championship game and realized what all the work is for. And hopefully, coming into this next year, um, you know, they're a bit hungry to get back and experience that again. I would say it's, it was heartbreaking. I think we put a lot of work into, uh, into last season. Um, and to make it there was a huge step for us in the program. And then coming into these, these conditioning weeks and whatnot, we have a little bit more of an edge um, in, in terms of pushing ourselves and whatnot because we know we can get there. And, and the next step would be winning it. And that, that's what we're trying to do this year. So. Up, down. Can you tell me what you guys have been doing your first week back? So we've been doing two a days. So uh, we'll get up in the morning and we'll, we'll have a practice in the morning for two hours. And then we'll have a little bit of a break, grab some lunch. And then we'll come back and, uh, and have another practice in the afternoon. Um, every odd day we do yoga and then we do a little bit of a workout. The yoga is new for us, so it's been a little bit different and challenging. Um, but it's different, so it's good. It keeps us fresh. We've got to rotate into the ball. You guys recovering are going to peel off to the crease. Come on, sprint and finish. Sprint and finish. No, we're sliding here, guys. We're sliding orange. We need this time. We, we need to get in, you know, the, wherever we are and, and go through the X's and O piece and uh, still get our conditioning in, um, you know, give guys time to gel and, and give the coaches time to figure out what personnel works best together. And, uh, you know, so the, the two a days were kind of a must this week. Um, you know, if we didn't have them, we would be a week or two behind. Uh, you know, Stevenson started, I think, two weeks ago. So, um, you know, we're, we've got to play a little bit of catch up here. So one partner is going to start with it. He's doing, uh, first guy's going to do 10, all right? How is your body feeling? I know you guys have only been at it for four days. Yeah. How are you feeling? It's only been four days, but we're all, we're all hurting and sore because, <laughs> yeah, it's four hours of practice a day, which is a lot more than any of us are used to. But you think it's going to be worth it? It's definitely going to be worth it. Lay a ball! Lay a ball! Judge! Now the team is facing Stevenson for the first game of the season. Do you think this is an ideal rematch or would you rather play somebody else first for the first game? I definitely think it's an ideal situation. We started with them first last year and then we also ended with them unfortunately, but they are the best team right now, ranked number one. And so to be able to prove ourselves in the first game of the year could be huge. And even if we fall short, which we hopefully won't, we'll know what to strive for. Oh, I think it's a great situation that, you know, I guess probably couldn't ask for much better. Um, we've tried to play a tough opponent coming out of the gate um, from the get-go. We played Stevenson in my first ever collegiate contest uh, where they really kicked our butts. But um, you know, we kind of wanted to set the bar high. Let's go 2v1. Again, guys, it's great picking the ball up, but we've got to finish the playoff. And uh, I see this game as a positive overall. Um, it kind of gets, you know, gets the past out of our system. You know, and then we can just worry about the rest of the season, win or lose. Um, you know, so it's going to be a great contest. They return a lot, and, and obviously we do too. So I think it's going to be a fun day. No, I, I think it's great that we're playing Stevenson. Um, I think it'll give us a good opportunity to show um, our 
I guess our skill set coming into the season. We know they're the best. They uh, they won it last year. They're rated number one this year. So I think it'll be a good opportunity to uh, to show ourselves where we stack up against the best in in, uh, in the country. Don't forget that staying connected to SportsZone is now easier than ever at ritsc.com or by downloading the SportsZone app for your Android or Apple device. Well, that does it for this edition of RIT Sports Zone. So until next time, thanks for joining us in the zone.